When these goggles first came out, there were some features that people begged DJI for, and to this day, DJI has not seen fit to develop them. And the two features that I think you're gonna be most interested in are, number one, the ability to have the full Betaflight OSD in the goggles. Right now, the DJI goggles can read certain OSD elements and display them on screen, but you can't get the full Betaflight OSD, including all the menus, all the display options and everything. They just don't support it. The other feature that I think, well, some of you, not all of you, but some of you are gonna be super interested in is the ability to have audio transmitted out the AV port on these goggles into your little earpiece. And, and this is a controversial one because many people don't fly with audio, but the people that do fly with audio desperately miss it when it's gone. And the thing is, the DJI Air unit has a microphone in it. It can record audio, it just doesn't transmit that audio over the air and the DJI goggles have an AV output, they just don't do it. DJI is not gonna give you those features, but the good news is that these goggles have been rooted by the folks over at the FPV WTF project. And what that means is that they found the keys to the kingdom, they got into the operating system, and they got the ability to modify the code that the goggles and the air unit and the Vista run to make it do well, for one thing, those things that I was telling you that DJI was never gonna give you, you can have those things now. And the reason I'm making this video today is that before now, the to, to implement this stuff required a lot of programming knowledge. But the FPV WTF uh, team have released a package loader and installer that basically makes this as idiot proof as anything this complicated can be. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna install this code Come along with me, and if these are features that you've been dying to get, this is the video for you. And we're gonna start this process at the GitHub page for the WTF OS project. There's a link to that down in the video description, as well as other reference links, timestamps, chapter markers, and so forth. All that stuff is in the video description below. And the first thing you need to know is that in order to do any of this, the goggles must be on the correct firmware. And how to tell if you're on the correct firmware might not be as simple as you might expect. The WTF OS configurator only officially supports rooting your goggles if they have the 0606 firmware on them. And here's how to correctly tell if that's the firmware that you've got. The first thing you're gonna need to do is put your goggles into DIY mode, uh, the mode that connects to the air unit and the Vista and not the mode that connects to the DJI FPV drone. Now, I'm willing to bet that a lot of people watching this don't own a DJI FPV drone and have never put their goggles into the FPV drone mode and so this doesn't really apply to you. If you do have the FPV drone, I assume that you have a Caddx Vista or DJI air unit, otherwise this routing really doesn't have any benefit for you and so I assume you know how to put them back into the DIY mode. Now, once they're in the DIY mode, you might think that you could just go into settings and about and look at the firmware version there. But according to the devs of this project, that is not always reliable. So what we need to do is we need to plug the goggles into USB. We need to start up the DJI Assistant and connect to the goggles. And then we need to see that the current firmware version shows 01000606. Uh, and if you look over here and you don't see refresh, but you see update, then it might be worthwhile go ahead and hit update. Even though 0606 is the latest version, there can apparently be some situations where it seems like you have 0606, but you don't really. Basically, what I think you wanna see is 0606 here and refresh here. And if not, go ahead and run the update and make sure they're at 0606. Now, if you don't have 0606 on your goggle and you can't flash 0606 from the DJI Assistant, your picture gets a little more complicated. In that case, I wanna refer you to this page, the supported firmware versions page on the FPV WTF repo, and it's gonna instruct you on the nuances of what you might need to do to be able to proceed. However, there are some situations, such as if you flash the 0015 firmware from the FPV drone side of the assistant, in those cases, you may be locked out of this and may not be able to root. Uh, check the page. If you are locked out, rest assured the devs are working on ways to get around that, but for the time being, you may not be able to proceed. At this point, we're gonna assume you have 0606 firmware on your goggles, and we're gonna proceed. The next thing to do is, 
I, I'm not 100% sure this is absolutely necessary, but I'm gonna take the SD card out of the goggles. Uh, it used to be when you rooted the goggles, you needed to have the SD card out of them. I don't know if that's still true, but just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Before I proceed, I'm gonna check that my goggle battery has a fair amount of charge in it. It's not gonna take long, but it wouldn't be good if the battery died during this process. And then I'm gonna plug USB in with the goggles powered up. Next, we're gonna to go to this website, testing.fpv.wtf. Hey there folks, it's Joshua from the future here. This website is not the website I just showed you. This is fpv.wtf and it is the main fpv.wtf website. The URL testing.fpv.wtf is the pre-release website. At the time that you are seeing this video, you should probably go to fpv.wtf because it will probably have been officially released. And we're going to root the goggles. We're gonna do that by clicking the menu here and clicking root. Having done that, I'm gonna hit root device and see what happens. COM22, I guess that must be the COM port the goggles are on. If I was uncertain about that, I guess I could just unplug the goggles and it went away. So yeah, that's definitely my goggles. If you see more than one COM port, make sure you select the one that is your goggles. We're gonna select COM22 here and we're gonna hit connect. After you connect, you should see the blue root device button become available. You're gonna hit that button and then some text will appear on screen and some things will happen. And at the end, it should notify you that your goggles have been rooted. At this point, we've successfully rooted the goggles, which gives us the ability to install arbitrary code on the goggles and run that code. But we haven't actually installed any code. Uh, we've unlocked the door, but we haven't opened the door and put anything in the storage unit. So the goggles are gonna function exactly like they always will. In order to actually take advantage of these new features, the next thing we need to do is install WTFOS on the goggles. So we're gonna plug the goggles in and we're gonna plug in USB. And you can see here that it now says device already rooted on the root tab of the uh, configurator. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the WTFOS tab and we're going to install WTFOS on the device. Now the WTF OS devs know that what we're doing is kind of sketchy. And if you were to load some code that maybe had a problem, you might get your goggles into a state where they wouldn't boot up. They built a fail safe into this uh, process. If you ever get your goggles in a state where they won't boot up, or if you just wanna temporarily go back to the original DJI operating system for any reason, you just hold down the bind button while powering up the goggles and it will bypass all this nonsense and you'll have your normal DJI goggles back. Notice that now the install option is grayed out under the WTFOS tab and we have update and remove instead. This is our confirmation that WTFOS has been installed on, and is running on the goggles. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the package manager and this is where we can install mods on the goggles. And the one that I am most interested in is the MSP OSD mod uh, let's just hit install here. Okay, that's installed. That's it, huh? I'm gonna guess we also need to root and configure a module on the air unit. Let's try that. So here we've got an aircraft with a Cadex Vista on it. We're gonna plug it in and I am gonna be using this little fan to make sure that the Vista doesn't overheat and unfortunately that means you're gonna to have to hear the fan noise for the rest of this video, but that's just how it is. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just double check that we're on the right firmware and you can see I've got 10606 current and refresh. That's good, that means we are on the right firmware. We can proceed. Next, let's go to the configurator and see if we can root this device. Sure enough, here it is, COM7, connect, and we'll give it a go. Alrighty, it says we've been rooted. Let's go to, okay, thank you for that. Let's go to the WTFOS tab and see what we've got. Can I, oh, connect to device. Connect, install, here we go. All right, we have installed WTFOS on the air unit and now we're gonna go to the package manager and we will install the MSP OSD service. So then what? Is it just working? Not quite. There's a couple of flight controller configuration steps we need to make. But for now, we can power down the video transmitter and turn this silly fan off. Next, we're gonna to connect to the flight controller using Betaflight Configurator, and we're gonna to go to the ports tab and we're gonna look at which port has 
MSP on it. In my case, it is UART3, and that is the port that the video transmitter is on. UART3 is the one I have. We're going to go to the CLI, and we're going to type set OSD underscore display port underscore device equals MSP. And we're going to type set display port underscore MSP underscore serial. And then we're going to put a number that is one less than the UART number that the VTX is on. So in my case, it's UART3. I'm going to put the number 2. We can then go to the OSD tab, and you'll see this is my default DJI OSD setup, which is kind of not right for actually it's, it's the screen layout doesn't match what your screen should actually look at like uh, but it works with the way DJI normally has it instead I'm gonna go to the presets tab and I'm going to load my default OSD setup and it says here OSD for analog and shark bite but in this case it's gonna be anything that has the full OSD uh, and I'm gonna pick that and save and reboot and that will give me my normal OSD in the DJI goggles, something I've never been able to get before. If you want to link to my private repo, uh, here's the information you need. I'll also put this text down in the video description if you want to copy paste it, and that will let you use my presets if that's something you're interested to do. Uh, if you are going to manually lay out your own OSD, bear in mind that you need to set the video format to PAL and not NTSC whenever you're using a DJI Walk Snail HD0, anything that draws the OSD over the MSP uh, protocol. Uh, so set that to PAL and then lay out your OSD however you prefer. I am super, super excited about this. And in just a second, I'm going to try this out and we're going to see if it worked. But before we do that, can I, can I take a second to plug my Patreon? Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you. Patrons get exclusive access to my Discord server where there's a ton of helpful and fun people talking about FPV. Uh, and patrons get access to uh, podcasts of my live streams. If you want to listen to them in your podcast reader instead of watching them on YouTube, uh, that is the only way to get that. But mostly, hopefully, you just get the feeling of, yay, I'm, I love Bardwell's content. He's given me so much, and now I want to give back. If that's how you feel today, there's a link in the video description where you can join my Patreon. I would love to have you as a supporter. And if you're not there yet, what has this guy done for me? I just clicked on this video. I don't even know who, who this guy is. Hey, keep watching content. I'll keep making content, and hopefully that day will come. In addition, I would heartily encourage you to contribute to the FPV WTF team if you end up using this feature and if you end up getting value out of it. These guys have worked their asses off to make a feature that DJI could have made and didn't, and it's a big freaking deal. I am personally, a, I did not realize I had donated this much to them. I thought I, I just made a donation thinking I hadn't donated before, but apparently I've donated in the past. Wow, okay, so I'm putting my money where my mouth is, literally, and I hope you'll do the same. There's a link down below to their Open Collective page. Alrighty, folks, it's time for the moment of truth. We're gonna power up the video transmitter and the fan. Sorry about that. And we're gonna see if it works. And sure enough, right here in the goggles is my Betaflight OSD exactly as expected. Now, if you've heard of this before, you may have heard of an older version of this plugin where you had to hold down the back button on the goggles to switch between Betaflight OSD and the regular DJI goggles. That is no longer the case. You can see I can go into my normal DJI menu as always, and the OSD is drawn on top. In fact, the OSD being drawn on top is a little bit of a problem because it's overlapping with some of the other DJI OSD elements. So real quick, I'm going to go into the menu here and go down to settings and I'm going to go to, I think it's in display and custom OSD. We're going to turn that off. We do not want the DJI custom OSD anymore. This plugin is doing the work for us and that's going to, yeah, that's going to clear up. Well, there's still something in the lower right overlapping with the battery voltage. So I might want to shuffle around some of my OSD elements, but amazingly, it is freaking working and it is fully working. Check this out. Oh, Betaflight OSD. It's the full OSD, baby. Menu, everything. It's the full OSD. Woohoohoo! <laughs> so freaking cool. It's so freaking cool. Now, I do want to point out that if you don't like the look of the font, you can download additional fonts packages as shown here in the wiki, and I will put a link to that down in the video description if you want to do that. I'm actually not a fan of that bold font, and I'd love to try one of the other ones. This development 
really shakes up the landscape of FPV goggles today because a lot of people might have been thinking about switching to the Walksnail Fat Shark system or the HD Zero system because they offer this killer feature. The fact that now you can get this killer feature even on the DJI system really changes the calculus. But the real question is, how good do those systems look compared to DJI? I wanna put a card on screen showing you some freestyle video I did in Portland using the Fat Shark system on what at the time was the latest firmware. I thought the results were pretty encouraging, but you form your own opinion. Here's a link to that card. Happy flying.